What's going on, guys? We're back with the Games and Things podcast number, or episode 7. Uh, I'm your host, the ACMJS, joined, as always, by Mr. He's in Pain. Um, so we're going to wow. try to... We're gonna try to keep things on the down low. Um, today, I know most of you I'm like hearing. Explanation. Do what? Terrible explanation. For what? Never mind. Just go ahead. <laughs> he had his teeth pulled. There you go. That, I mean, there. all you had to say. That's fine. Um, <laughs> now, even though you guys mainly hear my voice, anyways, it'll mainly be me for this podcast more than usual, I guess. Okay, um, we like your voice. You're not part of the audience. Shut up. Technically, I am uh, part you're... of the audience. So I'm watching your stream. Uh, oh yeah, speaking of streaming, I've been streaming. Sponsor plug. Nah. <laughs> I've been streaming. Uh, the Outer Worlds came out uh, Friday. Made a big brain move. Uh, I bought Game Pass for a dollar. Uh, this was my first time using it, and I practically got to play the game for a dollar. Um, I'm on part three. I just finished that earlier. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, more to come on that later about the uh, the review. Um, we have a lot to get through. Uh, Bethesda added again. They we thought they had stooped low before, and we now realize they have steeped even lower. If you have no idea what we're in my money. If you have no idea what we're talking about, they they decided to to um, basically come out with a premium subscription for like a hundred dollars, and and if you buy this premium subscription, um, you get your own private world, you get a scrap box which has unlimited storage for crafting components which apparently in the game is like a huge thing considering like you had to pay for extra storage and now they're giving it for a hundred dollars for unlimited which is kind of BS um, you get a new uh, placeable fast travel point with the stash and sleeping bag and apparently you give get 1650 atoms per month which is the currency in the game uh, some sort of exclusive outfit icons me, some and sort of. emoticons. That is, uh, that is, I forget the exact name, but that's like the OG outfit from Fallout New Vegas. That that outfit, like, is, I'm just so disappointed. That outfit's so cool. I think it's like a ranger or something. But it's, something like that. It's a specific outfit. Sorry, I'm nerdy now. I used to be a Fallout fan before, you know. <laughs> um, so, a uh, question I wanted to put uh, between uh-huh. us. What little words you can spare... Um, it's not that bad. I can talk, and since I may just stop, like, periodically. Uh, how does... So Bethesda's basically said, hey, Fallout Everything. fans, mm-hmm. fuck you. Here, you know, pay our money, or give us money. So, this is, like, the first multiplayer game, I guess, that they've done like this. So, my question is, how does their reputation now and what they're doing how does it affect the customers trust in bethesda in the future specifically well, regarding starfield and uh the next elder scrolls game bro it's gone it, when you take everything that your fans wanted you give it to them but with a hundred dollar a year paywall i mean i don't know if you know this but the mods is going to be part of that 100 dollar thing are you serious oh that's baloney yeah they're playing wow. the mods I mean, first it was a creator club, which sucked. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, or, and then, it was with the gold brain uh, mod the console. But um, now they're doing this, it's like, dude, there's nothing left. I mean, nobody's going to buy the game. And people do buy the game, it's just because, you know, they're those, like, try-hard fans who just don't understand that, you know, the game is going to be bad. And the fact that there are rumors that both of those games are still going to be run on that same engine that Dude, causes glitches oh and bugs. <laughs> it's going to be Bro, a what are they doing? good old time. Bro, you're telling me that they're that... Uh, 
Even Halo's updated their game engine. Even Activision has updated their game engine. Dog, look at the amount of work there. What are you doing? Oh man, the devs are gonna screw themselves. Just wait. They're they're gonna. This is gonna affect us long. Affect them long term. I wonder if they're gonna. Do? Huh? Does the devs make Doom? Yeah. Did that game even? The new one do? Oh wow. Did the new one even do good? I have no idea. Uh, well, but, yeah, no, I, yeah. what? What? Let's say, uh, if if Bethesda, well, Bethesda's pretty, you know, fucked up right now. Um, and my question is, are they gonna be? Are they ever going to be a point where Ubisoft is right now? Uh, I mean, I don't know, man. Ubisoft's kind of got their own special hole. I think Bethesda will dig their own special hole as well. But. You thought she was like the scum of scum, you know? Well, yeah, but did like, you hear about what happened? Well, you saw? Yeah. No. They, not not they, the uh, CEO, Yves Guimot, officially declared that uh, Tom Clancy's The Division 2 and Ghost Recon Breakpoint were both flops, and they didn't do what they were expecting, so they delayed all of their games until next year to uh quote unquote focus on the quality and the brand identity dude the, the freaking the consumers finally in power again oh my god not necessarily Why? that's wow. that's where i'm like i don't know if they're just kind of like saying that or if they're gonna actually do something about it because you know assassin's creed you know, they're like, oh, Odyssey is so great. And everybody's like, no, no, it's not. Can we, like, not do this? Can we get, like, a solid one storyline instead of multiple? And they're like, no. Nah. And then The Division 2, it was okay. It was fun with friends. The story wasn't all that great. Ghost Recon... I thought The Division 2 was solid. I didn't hear that many complaints. Well, I never did any PvP. I, j I just did the... The story mission we never did any multiplayer even donkey said it wasn't bad with friends and that's a lot i mean yeah it, it's pretty good with friends but the story overall is kind of well of course it's a ubisoft game yeah it's like it's like fascinating but it's like mm, when i pay 60 dollars um i uh, i have a, i have a question really quick uh-huh backtracking to 76 uh -huh. They played out Fallout 76 kind of like they did Fallout. If they played Fallout 76 like they were supposed to, do you think it could have been a hit game? What do you mean how they were supposed to? I mean, let's be honest, we all expected a different game. That is we true. Didn't, we didn't expect it to be so abysmal and poor. If they actually filled it with content, if they, if they treated it like a Fallout 4, which, I mean, that game broke, like, in my opinion, it kind of broke the internet because it was such a good game. Um... Would you think that it, it would be good if they if they okay let's put it like this and they put it out like an ESO Elder Scrolls Online where they like just pumped it full of stuff and it was full of content. Do you think it could have been a great game? Oh yeah. All right, now I have another question. Mm -hmm. They made Fallout seventy six free to play, then had all this hundred dollar extra content. Do you think that would be a fair move for Bethesda to do? No. No. Not a hundred dollars, maybe five or ten dollars, maybe. You know, but for private servers, unlimited storage, mods. No, not a hundred. Okay. Because well, how, what would be a fair price range for you then? Well, here's the thing. I'm saying like five ten dollars is kind of cheap. Uh, yeah. Sixty dollars would be for like a full game, so maybe somewhere between ten and thirty. And make it like a monthly subscription, I guess. So between ten and thirty, because you're getting a full game. In this case, you would be getting a full game for free, but they're also adding in content. And but the content shouldn't be behind paywalls like Ubisoft does, where it's like, okay, you get, you play the main game. Oh, you want to play DLC? You have to pay for it. But I think it should be added for free. But if you, you know gotta pay for unlimited yeah you know, that stuff so 10 to 30 dollars that's fair that's fair um do you think do you think there's any chance if they made so obviously the game's dead but if they made it free to play 
and then started approaching it like they had Destiny 2. Literally, Destiny 2 like resurrected themselves by leaving Activision and going free to play. Do you think if Fallout 76 did the same sort of plan as a uh, um, Destiny 2 went free to play, made all present DLC free, and then had you pay for the next big update, which is like the big update that got postponed, do you think it could resurrect itself potentially? I'm never going to play the game. I have no hope in it. That's why I never bought it. I was just, I want to hear your opinion from that, somebody who doesn't want really to play Fallout. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. I was going to say no, I, I wouldn't play it because... No, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, do you think they could resurrect themselves? I'm not saying would you play it, because I'm never going to play that game, unless uh, it, it's free to play. <laughs> even then, I don't even know if I still play it, because I just, it's such a disaster. At this point, no. Oh, yeah. I don't no. think they can, because of how many patches that they've done, how many times they've gone... How many promises? How many times they've gone back, like, on their word... They've said that, oh yeah, we'll never, you know, your gameplay won't be affected by paywall, and this is literally a paywall. So. I, I, actually, I agree with that. Alright, cool. That's I don't, what I had on that. I don't know if you heard about this, uh, but we were talking about Ubisoft delaying their games um, a year later. Uh, Naughty Dog came out recently and said they were delaying The Last of Us 2 from February to May. I saw this one your face, Lewis. Which is gonna be interesting. Okay. It's gonna be okay, Jonas. No, I'm fine. Okay. My question is I just want Ghost of Tsushima. <laughs> yeah. That's all I care about. And that that's what I was gonna go. Is I'm wondering if they had had a back and forth between which game was gonna be released first. And I'm kind of wondering if they pushed it back to May to give Ghost of Tsushima the February release. But I feel like that's too close together. I agree. And if it is too close together, then Ghost of Tsushima will come out, I think, in October. Like, I, I think, I wholeheartedly believe it'll come out in October next year. Before the PS5, because there are rumors that the PS5 won't actually come out until the month of December. Because when you say holiday, it's usually October, November, and December. Right. So, while unfortunate, yes, it'll just give me more time to play Cyberpunk in April. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, let's see. Dude. We've talked. Oh, what? Oh, my God. All my accounts recently. Um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, make sure you guys do double factor authentication. Oh, yeah. Authentication because. I've gotten about three texts this week with an EA security code. I've gotten two emails about my Epic Games account almost being hacked into. It's been a fun week. Oh, and somebody tried to hack into my email. So, oh, that's no, funny. Yeah. So um, make sure you do the double factor stuff because my accounts are getting bombarded by hack. Uh, just people are trying to get into my accounts. This is why I do not store my credit card or debit or credit information inside of these things either because, this, you know, you can, it can risk. That. Yeah. I don't even do it with my PS4. I delete it after I use it in my PS4. Mm. Yeah. For this Interesting. reason. Interesting. So yeah. Sorry, I just thought I'd put a little PSA out there. Just a reminder. Now you I'm getting sick of getting EA request or requests from EA with security codes. Yeah, this is the third one. First one was on Wednesday. Second one was on Friday. And today. Hmm. Yeah, it's getting annoying. But yeah, <laughs> no. All right. Anyways, back to regular schedule program. Um, uh, let's see, Death Stranding coming out soon, super excited for that, I'll be streaming that, hopefully I'll be done with the Outer Worlds by then, uh, streaming slash recording, I'm not sure yet, the only reason I decided to stream the Outer Worlds was because I actually had a face cam, um, but I'm it might, <laughs> but it might be something where... I might record the main gameplay and then stream the side content. Um, I'm not sure. But the uh, review embargo is being lifted November 1st, where we could potentially get leaked footage or st uh, like actual story details or whatever. Um, and then uh, I had been waiting for this. I don't know how many people realized this, but Conan O'Brien, late night talk show host on what is it tbs i think um went to japan i think it was a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months 
and they went to go visit uh, Kojima Studios in Tokyo, and they actually added him in the game as a cameo. And if you go to him and deliver whatever he needs, he'll give you a sea otter suit that helps you swim and traverse rivers more easily. I think that's kind of funny. But they were like, hey, Conan, we want you to, to do some voice lines. Um, I actually find that really cool. This game is just so random. I, I'm wondering how it's what Wow. Wondering how it's going to go. I'm wondering how many cameos they have in there. Because, you know, we got uh, Norman Reedus, Guillermo del Toro, um, they have, uh, what's his name, Jeff Keighley from uh, the Game Awards, he's in there, Conan O'Brien, um, Keanu Reeves was at their studio, I'm assuming he'll probably be a cameo at some point. Um, and the fun thing is that none of them are, like, major characters, they're just, like, these holograms um, of, like, survivors that are down in the bunker. <clears throat> and you like help connect them I guess with your uh, the network which is like part of your mission overall in the story um, and the, th this was something I wanted to ask you and have your opinion because I know what uh, I know what mine is I just want to uh, see how you feel um, what are your thoughts on seeing or reading game reviews like a week or two before the game actually releases to consumers. I personally uh, don't read them because I get too anxious and excited for the game, and right. I sit there wondering when it's gonna. You know, it feels like longer release than it is. Um, that's how I feel about Pokemon right now because I've looked at all the reviews so far that have been taken place from demos and stuff mm -hmm. and early gameplays, and now I'm sitting here like I just wanted to drop. Um, I did that with Luigi's Mansion as well. Mm. But uh, I, I, I think like it, it, it's for some people. It's not for me. It's not my thing. It's just because I get way too excited. And also not only that, but I kind of like going into a game not knowing what to expect. And if I read a review, I kind of know what to expect. Right. So, <clears throat> I mean, it, it just depends on the person, to be completely honest. For me, no. Like when Kingdom Hearts 3 was dropping, I did not look at anything. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. So, That's... Yeah. And and here's the thing, it, it's weird because reviews they can be good, they can be bad, they can be eh. I also and, hate reviews really quick. Just like I hate game reviews the same way I hate movie reviews. It's like, just, why am I gonna read somebody's review? Like it, it's different if it's like a YouTube channel. Like I think there's one I recall called like Gamer Rants or something, and they do game reviews, and their game reviews are actually solid. Right. Like game. With these people who do game reviews, it's like, are you even a gamer? <laughs> Like, same with movie reviewers. It's like, Venom had a terrible movie review, but the fan reception was amazing, and it did good. So it's like, does it really matter what these people think? Because at the end of the day, if I like it, I like it. You know? Mm -hmm. So I don't care for reviews. So the only time I look into reviews is like, because I mean, I'm still on the fence about buying Luigi's Mansion, and I'm just like, okay, like here's where reviews are important. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, because I'm a teeter totter, but it's like, we'll, we'll see what happens. And but no, reviews are my thing. If that's what you were, that's the answer to my question. And and that's what I I was I'm gonna s I was gonna say is there um it it's weird because for those people who want to play the game already, they're like, oh, here's some information, you know, let me just read this real quick, and then they end up spoiling some of the game for themselves. Same exactly. thing with uh, YouTube reviews. Um, some of them will be like, okay, here's a review of like the whole story. And it's like, wait a minute, I didn't want to know that. And there's these other people where it's like, well, I've seen, you know, the gameplay demos, but I'm not sure yet. You know, and it's like, I don't know if I want to buy it or not. And then you kind of read it and you're like, okay, yeah, sure, I'll buy it. And then there are those people who they'll just be like, Eh, you know. Um, personally, I don't like it because it, it... It's not that it hypes up the game, which it most certainly does. But for oh, yeah. me, it's that there are the potential spoilers in there. And th this is something that I've noticed on uh, my Google feed. Um, if you didn't know, if you have a Gmail account, if you go on Google, you have a news feed that 
um, is brought up by like tracking your history and it's sometimes it's like things that you search for so for me my google history is like law and order svu blue bloods death stranding cyberpunk uh anything sony or playstation related it all just pops up and i always find it hilarious when some sort of brand new news comes out because i've talked about this before where it's like oh playstation's done this and then there's like five other articles on my news feed from like polygon GameSpot, gamestop um you know games radar and it's just multiple things the same thing and i'm like i've already seen it stop but in those like titles on your google feed it can also spoil some stuff too with like descriptions of like the latest episode of whatever so i personally don't care for them and considering most of the game journalists aren't even journalists or you know they don't know how to do stuff right um and by that, I mean they don't know how to play a game. <clears throat> so. <laughs> exactly. Um, keeping on, I guess, somewhat of the topic of uh, PlayStation. Um, I. There are rumors in the works. Of course, they're rumors. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn 2. There are rumors based on basically that Guerrilla Games has been hiring a lot of people for their team and the rumor is that they are doing uh horizon zero dawn 2 for the ps5 that it will be a launch title see i'm gonna finish that that game is so good and i don't give it the respect it deserves by just sitting through it and finishing it i'm like almost halfway yeah. through the game it's i game. i finished it i've never it's... done the dlc i need to go back and actually oh, there are two you know. games two PlayStation games that I need to go back and actually record for my channel. One of them's Horizon, the other is God of War. Dude, you played God of War how many times? I've played it uh, four times now. Because my first one, I went through and played it. The second one, I went through, and then I wanted to do a new game plus, I think. And then I did a new game plus. Actually, three. That's three. But yeah, I need to do that for my channel. Um... You never finished it, so I can't talk about. Actually, yeah, sorry, it, it's just. Actually, I can't. I want to finish it. it. It's honestly, in my personal opinion, one of one of the most next to Fallout being another one, uh, one of the most interesting game concepts for a game. I it is, it's such a cool game. Right. Like you know, would you ever expect like just the way they go about it? it it's like it's a it's like a. It's like they could have easily just like copy and pasted like a Terminator type of deal, but they did such a good job with it that it's just, I don't know, I think it's one of the coolest things ever. I really like it, I just need to finish it. Right. Um, so here's my question. Hold on. F. Um, um, oh, you're back. Um, do you have any idea where the game's setting is? Some, like, like destroyed city, right? Or something? And then, like, you go to the area with all the planes and stuff, but I haven't gotten there yet. Okay, so... If you were to choose a place that a sequel would occur, where would you put it? Um, I mean, we can limit it to, to, like, continents. Like, would you want to yeah, see, like... Help me out here. Help me out here. Like, what, that's a very, very, very yeah, hard... Yeah, like, would you want to have it in the United States? Would you want to have it, you know, do, like, some other thing? Like, for those of you who don't know, through, as the story progresses, you kind of learn what happens or what happened so to try to keep spoilers to a minimum if what happened happened there would you want to go to another continent to see how it transpired and how it affected them this may sound really really corny but i i have it's like a place i've always wanted to visit too just because of how beautiful it is i'd really like to see something like an iceland iceland would be interesting yeah just to see how that kind of technology affected a small, 
like, you know, a place like Iceland would be kind of interesting. Not only that, but the visuals would be stunning because, man, that's a beautiful country. I would want to and see also, it. I'd uh -huh. like to see, um, just, just, this is a, I've always been interested because they've never really done something like an Ice Age type of game. I'd be interested to see it in a really snowy place. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can see that. Like, I love how Red Dead actually has a snowy area, just because, like, that's something that's not in many games. So, I'd love to see kind of like a snow area where you have to deal with the cold, like, as, like, a, a problem. Like, you know, like, you, your attacks are slower, like, you're not as accurate, like, you know what I'm saying? I feel you. They have that in the uh, Frozen Wilds DLC. It's in the name. Oh, word? Oh, uh... But, um, I wouldn't mind seeing them do it in Russia. Just because it's, oh, be it's so cool. vast and it's also very snowy, but the world map that you could think of that huge area, like going to Moscow, and that's that would be actually be really the cool. only Russian city I can think Russian. of off the top of my head, Stalingrad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, yeah, actually, I agree with you. That'd be sick. Russia that'd would be, cool. be kind of nice. That would actually be really cool. All right. Uh, speaking of you know, PlayStation 5 titles. Um, apparently there was... Oh, that's expensive. A... Is it? We're, we're gonna get into it. Yeah, just, let's get into it. Um, apparently there was a uh, retailer in Europe who... I don't remember the, that exact number, but basically they put out a price for the PlayStation 5 in, you know, holiday 2020. And it was rounded to about five hundred and fifty-eight dollars USD, which, if you were to put it, you know, in our over here in our terms, it would probably be about five hundred dollars if we're talking real. Um, and the only reason I say that is because they did the four hundred dollar console with the PS4, and six hundred dollars is way too high. So it seems like anywhere between 400 and 500 would be acceptable for the console that you're buying. That is supposedly has better graphics than the Xbox and the PS4. They have the AMD ray tracing technology and all of that. So yes, it is expensive. It's half a thousand dollars to put it in perspective. Um, that's more than I make in. Yeah. Um, when you work one day a week, calm down. Excuse me, they don't need to know. <laughs> All right. um, and uh, with this uh, retail rumor, we did get some more images of the uh, actual, I think, dev kit that uh, they showed off, um, which I'm about to pull up on the screen if I can find it. There it is. Ah, perfect. Wait, did it? Oh, hold on. Let me just... Uh, let me move this out of the way. Perfect. Um, so this is the dev kit. I'm sorry, Jeremy can't see. Um, it, it looks very, very similar to the uh, concept designs that we've seen. Um, it's very interesting if you zoom in on it. That's not what I wanted to do. Uh, here you go. Let's just... Hold on, if I can zoom in, that'd be great. If you zoom in on it, uh, you can see there's multiple ports and buttons. Um, it looks like it has a standby mode, the actual button you press to eject the disc, instead of the weird, like, touch-based, um, you know what I'm talking about, to eject the disc or turn on the power. Yeah. It's There's no real, um, like, indicator that, oh, this is this, and then there's, like, a 4K camera. So, that's that's what that is. Um, I'll bring up more pictures later for other topics. Um, but yeah, if it does come out and it is $500, I'll just have to ask for more. Actually, no, I'll probably pay for it myself, to be honest. Um, all that money, that's going to be expensive as heck. Um, something, some, a little bit of controversy. I think you'll actually like this, Jeremy. Um, one of oh, my... I heard, I heard, I heard the, that something happened. I know what this is, I just don't know the details. Okay, one of my favorite companies 
I think their ego got a little bit too much for them. Just a little bit. According to CD Projekt Red, uh, one of their... I don't, I don't think it was a dev team. I think it was one of the developers. They claimed that Cyberpunk 2077 is the last big push of the generation. Um, I'm assuming they're talking about, like, graphically-wise, gameplay-wise, design-wise. It's probably the best game of this generation for, like, PS4 Pro and Xbox One. The problem I have is we've already seen two great games that haven't come out yet, and that's Ghost of Tsushima and The Last of Us 2. So what about them? Because if you've seen Ghost of Tsushima and you watch the trailer in 4K, oh, oh it's beautiful. Oh. I cannot Dude, wait, I wait to play that game on PS4 Agreed. Pro 4K HDR. You can't wait for it. I do not have a PS4. I can't wait to play on PS5. Uh, so. I, I 110% disagree. I do as well. And I love these developers. That's why I was what like. What about Nintendo, dog? What about Breath of the Wild 2? You dummy. Shut up. I didn't play that game, so. I said Breath of the Wild 2, the new one. Oh, the new one? There's a new one? Yeah. It, it, there's, it, it's one in development. Uh, what I'm talking about. What about Breath of the Wild 2? Shut up, you and dumb. <laughs> okay. Um, well, the, the point of that was just saying there are other great games. My, and I disagree with him because we haven't even seen the game yet, so why are you hyped? You know what I mean? I mean, we... Uh, true, yeah. I was going to say we I mean, have, we but technically played, we haven't, yeah. Well, played, play, sorry, played, played. Well, played. I mean, we have seen it, but at the same time, it was like PC running like maximum graphics. So we don't and not know. Not only that, but it's only segments of the game. Remember how all the Assassin's Creed they managed to make it look sick through the. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually really um, interesting if you go back and watch. I think there's a video specific, or either it's specifically Ubisoft or all the games are Ubisoft, um, and it's game demos before and after, and it's when um, they released the gameplay demo during E3 compared to what actually happens in the game mm -hmm. and it's they take sections of it and they compare the two and there's watchdogs there's the division there's assassin's creed um it's very in or assassin's creed 4 it's very um very uh interesting if you go and watch it because you're like oh that's cool and other news star wars oh, did you see the new oh, oh sorry i'm sorry oh, go ahead no 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 introduce it first Star Wars Fallen Jedi. There's more Star Wars news later uh, that we'll talk about probably after this. Um, they has been confirmed. They do have lightsaber customization. There are four different categories. I'm going to pull up the picture. Um, there is one picture. Ah, here it is. Hold on, let me... Uh, I'm not gonna lie, so this is what I was going into. Uh huh. Did you see the last gameplay trailer for this game? I have not. Okay, so remember how I said I wasn't gonna buy it? Uh huh. Right, right away? Because it looked. Well, one of my concerns was it looked linear. It looked like a game I could just buy at any time. I watched the last gameplay trailer. Oh my gosh. Oh. Uh. I might change my. Um, <laughs> I almost, I almost considered waiting on Pokemon. That's how good it looked. Ah. Uh. You need to watch it, because what they do is, instead of just showing linear missions, you can go back to other worlds after you're done with them. Yeah, like, yeah, or yeah. After you get more force powers. The, you, like, there's, like, you know how, uh, in Uncharted, you can, like, do all the puzzles and, like, parkour and stuff? Mm-hmm. Well, like, literally, there are scenes in freezing, force, uh, sorry, I'm trying to speak the best I can, force freezing stuff? Mm-hmm. As he's sliding through an ice tunnel, force freezing objects to get through them, then jumping on the walls, running across the walls, to then force jump onto another platform, and then bounces you onto another platform. It's like, it looks sick. They took platforming elements out of other games, which I love, because it shows the freeform movement of a Jedi. And yeah, right. and also, I heard that some of the temples that you can go into to get collectibles and stuff take hours to figure <sighs> out. I'm like, yeah. Oh. Is that good or bad for you? That's really good. 
Yeah. I'm gonna need so a guide to get through them, but that's really good. <laughs> what I'm saying is, like, interest is back in the game because it doesn't look linear. I see what so, you're saying. I'm interested. Not only that, but some of the combat was sick. Like, the way they were freezing stuff, deflecting bullets. Also, we learned in this demo that you actually have to play very defensive in the game. Right. I mean, literally, you get ragdolled around by all enemies. And, like, yeah, it's... There are scenes where he's fighting just normal stormtroopers. And he's literally sitting there blocking their attack for, like, 30 seconds to a minute, trying to approach and figure out a tactic to kill them or attack them. It's like... Whoa, this game is deeper. I thought it was just going to be another Force Unleashed. That's why I was like, eh, I'm good. Oh, but I might actually get this unreleased. Because it, that's the question right now. Is, is it better than Force Unleashed? Because it looks solid. You need to watch the game. But I watched it. It looks amazing. You, I, I, I want, I, my interest is back in the game, and I want to get it very soon after it drops. So I'm, I'm for sure getting this game, whether it's on launch or it's uh, a week after for my birthday. All right, I'm done talking right now because, like, yeah, so spent a lot of talking. energy there. <laughs> yeah, just start talking. Two two things on that. Um, one, they said that the gameplay looks and feel. People who have played the gameplay, and this goes back to reviews. These aren't reviews. These are just impressions, which are like, I guess, kind of like a first draft. If you want to think about it like that, it's a first draft to a review, and they have said that it plays a lot like Sekiro: Shadows Die Twice where the combat is it's it's not that it's unforgiving but it's that you have to find ways and openings to attack your opponents not only that but i have a video for you i haven't seen it yet i added it because it was on my um it was on my home page and it was um the title was i've played star star wars is it better than the force unleashed or whatever so we can watch that at some point um, back to what I was saying, uh, customization is actually going to be very uh, interesting in terms of the lightsaber. Um, it's broken down into four different categories. You can customize the color, the emitter, the switch, the sleeve, oh yeah, the sleeve, and even the material that it's made out of, which I personally really enjoy. That'll be interesting seeing different things and I think also in the demo we found that you have different workbenches I guess you collect different upgrade parts throughout the game that you can upgrade your uh, robot or maybe even your um, maybe even your uh, lightsaber um, let's see so that was that and then I wanted to talk about the uh, the pre-order uh, what's it called pre-order bonuses if you will um, so this one I'll, I can send these all to you later which is what I'll do um, this is the orange lightsaber blade color which is the pre-order bonus and this is for any of the game games editions that you order if you just pre-order the regular one or the deluxe edition um, so that's the orange lightsaber um, they gave us two more, um, and this is the different cam uh, campaign hilts. Um, it's called the Maigito or Maigito and Umbaran campaign hilts, which look sick as heck. I like personally like the black one. A lot of people probably like the gold one. Um, let's see, and then the last thing you get when you pre-order is. This little guy, it's a skin for BD1. It's the orange one, it looks pretty good. Looks pretty sick to me. Um, so once again, if you pre-order the game, you get those uh, three items for any for any game, or any uh, edition of the game you buy. Um, that's all we have for pictures, unfortunately. Um, oh, another thing is uh, when you customize the lightsaber, um, if you customize like the color or the switch or the material or whatever, it actually changes in the cutscenes. So it won't be like, oh, here's a standard lightsaber hilt that you'll see on your hip all the time. It'll change as you evolve, which I personally love. I hate games where, like, like Assassin's Creed 4, I'll say, there's like one cutscene where you fire like a broadside at him and then the cutscene happens 
and it's like your ship was on the completely other side when the broadside happens. It's like, that's not how that happened at all. Um, and then we're, we're back to the outer worlds. Um, people still don't seem to comprehend uh, the whole principle of wanting it on Steam for some reason. Because um, everybody's like, oh, it's on the Windows Store. It's like, yeah, but... And I bought it on the Windows Store through Game Pass, just to say that. But a lot of people want it on Steam because it's easier to mod the game on Steam um, than it is if you were to buy it off of the Epic Games Launcher or the PS4 or Xbox One. Um, before I bought it, I think it was... And this goes back to what we were saying earlier. Um, I think it was a week before it came out, all these reviews were coming out. And it was surprisingly well received from a lot of people. So a lot of people were kind of torn about it. They were like, eh, it looks fun, but I'm not sure... Um, and a lot of people are just like, eh, and now everybody like wants to play the game, which is great. Um, some highlights, uh, there's a lot of gorgeous world building going on. Um, every city or town that you enter, you know, it's populated with people. Um, it's not like Fallout where it's, you know, there are people missing or there aren't any, any isn't, there aren't anybody at all. Um... I haven't run into any bugs, I haven't run into any glitched missions or NPCs so far, which is a good thing, especially on launch. Um, they, they are political, but they're not politically charged, which means they try to uh, take problems that we face in today's day and age, or today's world, and they just kind of make it thought-provoking without being one-sided or preachy which is a good thing um i personally loved all the different conversations i've had with the npcs so it's like good script writing good dialogue um i don't think i've seen a single npc dressed the same way they're all kind of different they all have like different hats or different colored uniforms like they'll have the same uniforms but they're like different colors which i think is really good um however the biggest problem i'm having is the frame rate between the cities <laughs> which you can see on my stream um i mean if you're a fan of obsidian and fallout 3 or even bioshock uh you're gonna love fallout i mean you're gonna love um the outer worlds i it's weird because i know it comes from the creators of fallout 3 but I get huge Bioshock vibes from it because of the art deco style and, like, the weapons and everything. It's just really cool. It's just really neat. Um, this is something interesting. This has been in the room in the, the rumors for a while. Um, I wanted to get your thoughts. I don't know how many we'll get. But GTA 6, I don't think it's coming out for PS4 or Xbox One. I think it, it'll come out once the next generation of consoles are coming out. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it rumored it's supposed to be taking player or something? Or like, or like, you're, or like it was like multiple cities around the world, like big cities around the world or something? I have no idea. The... There have been a lot of rumors. I, I, I kept up with them for a small bit and then I was not interested anymore. The f like, like baits like, unboxing GTA 6. I'm like, dog, you're so dumb. Oh yeah. There was one rumor that I had seen, I suppose, where they were like, oh yeah, they're going to Florida. I was like, what? That'd be funny. They can make fun of Florida. Well, yeah, but they already did that in... You're right. You're right. They did. Vice City. Vice City. Yeah. Thank you. I, I was like... Um, another thing is... I don't think they will, but it's possible. It's that before GTA 6, do you think they'll remaster all the previous ones? No, but I all, I don't know. That's a good question. I think they'll do San Andreas for sure. But um, right now they're focused on Bully 2. So. Are they? Yeah, that's the rumor that Bully 2 is coming. I, I read something. I don't know if you read this or if you heard this. Um, I don't remember where it was, but I read something where the developer said that they had started working on Bully 2, but something happened and it's been out of development. Oh. 
since when, when did you hear this? a while ago. This was a couple of days ago. Oh, okay. Then that might be new news. That I... Um, the last time I heard about it, it was coming and a lot of people were hyped. Right. But I think it's because nobody from Rockstar had officially made, like, Bully 2 a thing. Fans were just kind of like, we want a sequel. And then I think Rockstar Games finally came out and they said, well, we had a sequel and then something happened and we don't have it anymore. Oh, wow. I don't know. I never played the original Bully. I never did either. Unfortunate. I heard it was fun. I think I've, I've seen some gameplay clips... And I think at that time, I was just like, what the fuck is this? I guess. Nah, um... I don't know if the remaster needs to see it. But, uh... I think... Uh, I just want the original Red Dead on I think they... Mm, that's the I thing, think. is that they're doing Red Dead 2 on PC. I think after that, they should do the first one, and then all of the Grand Theft Auto games. I, I just, yeah. Also, I just want single player DLC for Red Dead 2. I just want Long Dead Nightmare. We're not gonna get it. <laughs> We're not gonna get it. Also, hold on, I have a question. If you want single player DLC for that game, why on earth would you want it to be Zombie Simulator? Why? Because they're not gonna do anything else. I, I thought the Cowboys vs. Aliens was sick. However, the last Long Dead Nightmare was pretty cool. I think they could do a lot better with the graphics they have now. They can be way more spooky and scary as heck. I would rather not have that, but okay. Um, the other concept they were thinking was Cowboys. That was the other rumors, Cowboys vs. Aliens. That'd be funny. But I just think Undead like, Nightmare fitting better with the cast than they have. I want a Cowboys vs. Indians. Oh, wait. <laughs> wait. Go play Gun. Literally, just play Gun. Um, have you heard anything new on on the next topic? You don't? Okay, forget it then. Do what? Uh, I couldn't hear you. You were moving your mic. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, if, if you want that, just go play this old western game called Gun. That's literally like Red, oh. Dead, Red Dead, and it's literally you like spend half the game fighting Indians. Oh, interesting. It's actually a really good game. It's on the original Xbox. I'm sure you can like just download a ROM. Oh, gun, look it up. I actually really enjoyed it. I would play it again. Maybe you could get it on Steam for cheap. I'm, I'm gonna look. But oh, yeah, so, um. Uh, uh, no, I have not heard anything about the next topic at all. No? Okay. Not um, new. other than it's still going on. It is? How bad has it gotten? I don't know. Well, I'm not sure. I just know I'm pretty sure it's still going on. The whole if you don't know what we're talking about, obviously because we haven't said anything about it. Uh, the whole Blizzard backlash in Hong Kong. Um, nobody really knows what's happening. Nobody knows where they're going. Um, the next topic, uh, I really regretted to put it on here, but I was like, you know what? Our fans deserve the best. So Overwatch Two. <laughs> oh God, sorry. I just also known as Overwatch Harder. <laughs> Um, Ugh, God. Progress apparently I won't. Like that game. <laughs> over, uh, progress won't carry over from uh, the first game, which I think is fair because it's a new game. It's coming out, even though ya boys, meaning me and Jeremy, we don't play these multiplayer games. Well, these types of toxic op uh, multiplayer games. Um, so yeah. Uh, T. So we're out of the gaming news. That was all a gaming segment. Now oh, we're on to. Oh, um, you got wait, anything well, else I, before we move on to TV and movies? Did you say there was no player progression in that game, or like your stuff wasn't going to be saved. Also, look at that link when you have the chance. Um, I think that's just a way of watching. Like, crap, we need to save our game, so let's wipe all their progress and do it again. Yeah. Okay, um. All right. Next topic. So I know I know you hate this. And it's understandable, uh, but the Cowboy Bebop Netflix live remake. Oh, here it is. Okay. The yeah, sorry. no, you're good. The actor, the main actor who's playing as Spike, um, John Cho suffered an injury, which is setting production back seven to nine months. 
I don't know what happened. I want to say either he broke a leg or something happened with his ribs. I don't remember. But that could be completely false. Don't take my word for it. Um, ah, Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. The new trailer premiered on uh, Monday Night Football. Um, I rewatched it. I was like, okay, it's eh. Where's the Star Wars movie? We're going to see it in December. Did, did you watch the new trailer? Can't be honest with you. You didn't watch the new trailer? That's fine. Because I think it's just going to be just as bad as the others, but I'm still going to go see it. Because I'm a stupid Star Wars fan. See, and I'm in the same camp because, you know, everybody has their own opinions. I personally, out of the newer ones, we've talked about this before, out of the new ones, I liked 8 better than 7. And the same director, J.J. Like Abrams... Well, yeah, I did too, but I mean out of, like, the trilogy movies. Rogue One, I think, is probably the best out of all of them. Yeah. Um, oh, the Darth Vader scenes alone. You know what? Okay, I watched that movie two times in the theater. You know that? I'm sorry. Rogue, no, Rogue One. I watched Rogue oh, One oh, twice okay. in the theater, okay? Mm-hmm. You know why I watched it a second time? Why? Just so I could see that Vader scene again. Oh god. At the mm-hmm. end. But it's so understandable. Oh my god. Okay, I'm not gonna spoil it. I mean it's been a couple of years, but I'm not gonna spoil it. it. It all I'm saying is if you haven't seen Rogue One, go and watch it, because if you watch Rogue One and then go and watch episode four, the plot makes so much more sense. Right? Would mm-hmm. you agree with me? Okay. Yeah. Um uh, let's see what else. Watchmen, uh, the first episode from HBO came out. What? No, I just I didn't know things from my mouth. Go ahead. Ah. Watchmen, the first episode from HBO came out uh, last Sunday, I believe. Uh, very interesting. Um, a little, a little bit confusing. Just, just a little bit, I guess. If you don't know what I'm talking about, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. Um, there's there's uh, some like timeline episode stuff, that's kind of weird, but it, it it was a solid good episode. I I enjoyed watching it, um, and of course nowadays when anybody you know mentions like timeline stories, Westworld is the first thing to come to people's head because Westworld did a really good job of doing that, and it kind of forces people to go back and watch the older seasons. Because then you're like, okay, so in the current season, this is when this occurred, and it's really weird. Um, there's a new show that came out on the CW called Batwoman, which I thought... Oh Hold on. Everybody hates that show so much. Ex- All I hear is people complaining about it. Excuse me? Yeah. I like the series so far. Really? Everybody's complaining about it, complaining about politics. <clears throat> oh, politics. It's doing really, the show, apparently the show is doing really bad, and apparently... The, the Batgirl actor got injured, like really badly injured. I did read that somewhere. That's all I know on it. I only know nev negatives. It's, it's like any show. Any any sh- is it a CW show? Yeah. That's why any superhero CW show right now is just getting slammed. Well, you know why? I think they, I think they essentially, and, and this is part in part of it is because of DC, um, and. So this actually does tie into everything. I'm not going to go into a huge rant. But basically, you have Marvel, right? Marvel started in 2000... Or they didn't start, but they started off the cinematic universe with Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man in 2008, right? Every movie that has come out since then has been a part of the MCU, okay? DC kind of messed up, because around that time, Christopher Nolan's Batman was on the scene and they did the trilogy with uh, Christian Bale movie in the in the theaters. Well, the problem is DC is trying to do what Marvel is doing. Except the problem is they didn't do what they did back then and so they're trying to catch up. So basically they're compensating with TV shows what they're trying to do, what Marvel did with the movies. So specifically on the CW, um, their first really big hit was arrow and then i I like until the season where if you haven't watched it that's your own problem i'm spoiling something um oh when uh he retires and then like starts training the other people i was like yeah this is dumb yeah 
it was it, trash. It was fun watching it. And then the whole thing about it is there. I'm like, dude, oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of problems with CW shows. But they did. They started off with Arrow, which was a hit. And then they did The Flash, which a lot of people enjoy. I've heard a lot of people oh, like it. A lot of people. That's the only CW show that I hear that has positive stuff. That's it. Let's see, Arrow, uh, Flash, and then they did Supergirl, and oh, then... I, that one was negative for me, at least. Everybody said negative stuff about that one. And then they did... I think they did Black Lightning, and then they oh. did The Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah, is that that one where the, the actor from Arrow that plays Sarah goes to, like, The Legends uh, of Tomorrow? I don't remember. Okay. And now, they have Batwoman. And honestly, he, here's the weird part, okay? Arrow is... You know, these are all hour-long... Cable network. Do you mind with your mic? Holy crap. What's wrong? Sorry. Your mic. Is that better? Yes. It was um, a fan, I'm sorry. You're good. The whole thing is it's like an hour long show. <clears throat> and I don't know if it's because I'm tired of watching it or not, but it first came out when it first came out on Netflix, I binge watched like four seasons of Arrow. <clears throat> and then I caught up to the current season, started recording it and watched it from then on. But to me, it's like by the time the hour is done, like by the time the episode is over, I am just tired. You know what I mean? Like it's tiring and boring to watch for me personally. Yeah, because they've dragged it on way too long, in my opinion. I think they should have ended a lot while ago. But the weird thing is with Arrow, or, or not. That was good for a good amount of time, and then it just died. But the, the interesting thing is with Arrow. Is I was like, eh, you know, but I'm still with it because I'm like, oh well, it's the final season, might as well watch it because I've watched it for the past, you know, X amount of years. But then Batwoman came on and it's like refreshing for me to watch almost. It's like I don't have a problem with what they're doing. I don't have a problem with the whole political BS. Um, there's multiple things, um, that are in that. If you guys don't know, this is spoilers for the second episode at this point um they're bringing in hush do you know that batman villain no basically Whoop. Mm -hmm. uh basically he's like an identity thief and i didn't know who who he was and i was like or i didn't know his name i knew the name hush but they kind of brought him in as his persona and um, I thought, I was like, huh, that's interesting that they're going to do that. I find it refreshing to watch. If it doesn't get beyond one season, I don't care. Here's where I do have a problem, though. <laughs> Is after Stephen Amell leaves Arrow. I love Stephen Amell, dude. I do, too. I love the love fact that he's also a pro wrestler, I think. He's been on WWE, like, two or three times. Like, as that. a guest. Oh, so that's oh, pretty cool. right. Yeah, I know that, yeah. Um... But when he leaves season seven, they are officially renaming the show Green Arrow and the Canaries. And supposedly it's supposed to be his daughter, Mia Smoke, and the two Canaries. And I'm just like, so you're telling Damn me it. it's going to be an all-female lead cast for wait, did... an already dying show? <laughs> wait, wait. Remember the chick he dated? Well, chick he dated from... The, the tech nerd one? Felicity? Yeah, it was Felicity. Did they end up get, ever getting back together? So, spoilers <laughs> for, like, I, all I seasons care. of Arrow. I, I know you don't, but our listeners. Um, yes, they do eventually get together, and they get married, and they have a kid. And oh, so they do get back together after that whole fiasco where she left. And yeah. Was she, was she in a wheelchair? Yes. Did, didn't they miraculously make her walk again? No, they found tech, and they put it in her spine. Here's why I don't watch the show. Eh. But, um, what was I going to say? It's very interesting because how they're ending the show is they're going towards the Crisis on Infinite Earth comic storyline. So, like, Arrow is, oh, I got to go help him. And then it's the same thing on Flash and Legends. And that that's the one thing that I kind that I do like about DC being on the CW is if it's on the same network, it's like, they're more than likely to watch all of those shows, but they also do crossover events with like the other shows, kind of like the comics would do. 
So I think it's interesting. I'm just kind of tired of Arrow at this point. Anyways, Batwoman, Batwoman, good show. If you haven't seen it, it's it's interesting. I really enjoyed it. Um, Walking Dead season oh, we're something. Oh, talking about this. Hey, hey. Bro, just let it die. <laughs> No. I don't like that show at all. Here, here's the thing. Carl. Carl. <laughs> Carl. Hey. Can I tell you a spoiler? Did he die? Did he die? <laughs> Dad. That's a spoiler. So dumb, dude. Just let him just die. Oh. Uh, I'm, I'm doing us a favor. Just... Hold on. Hold on. No. We're okay. Not. No, we're not done. The first episode was okay. All right? It was okay. The second episode, nobody liked because it was focusing like on like the main villain and like how she became it. Everybody was like, "We don't care about this. Can we move on to the Walkers?" Uh, after this, see, I think I'm just done. The Walking Dead. Oh, dude, I stopped a long time. We'll see. That's your problem, not mine. Wait, hold on. Um, have you finished My Hero Academia season whatever yet? Do not say anything about the new season. No, no, no. I wasn't going to say anything. I was just asking if you had finished it or if you had watched it or whatever. So me and my brother, little brother, are watching the show together, but don't listen. He's coming out next weekend, and we're going to watch, like, binge, like, the, la the next three, four episodes. Oh. I, I don't... Okay, so the thing when it comes to stuff, that's re when I really like a show, I will not watch the episode right when it comes out. I will wait a couple weeks and then binge watch, like, four of them so I don't get stuck, stuck on cliffhangers. Because my hero is too good of a show for me to only watch one episode at a time. Mm. Does that make sense? I suppose. Yeah, so when it comes to my hero, I like to like watch like four episodes in succession because I binge watched the show originally. Right. Like, that's the one show, the one anime where I can say like I binge watched it. Like this is all I did for like a week straight. JoJo, I was doing that, and then I just been busy, so I haven't had the time to watch JoJo because I've been busy <laughs> with homework. But I, I watched some of uh, this. This weekend, and I was laughing really hard. It, that's just hilarious. But not yet. No, I'm gonna catch up on my hero. Uh, I was just curious. I don't watch it. I'm not a. It's a really good anime. I'm not it's an anime really... nerd. I'm not never gonna watch that show. Yeah, shut up. You still watch it, so. Um. Really well, no, it, it's funny because like the popular anime, I'm kind of like, well, the new popular. Oh, it's, it's Everybody who is an anime fan should watch Cowboy Bebop. Um. That's just my opinion. I watch really obscure, weird animes, because um, I, I specifically like the, the uh, what's it called, the samurai era. The um, I forget what period it's called, but like the that specific period with the samurais wandering in the forest. I'm a nerd. Um, I still need to finish Futurama. I love that show. I'm on the last season. I just haven't had the time, because it's weird that you know we sit down and we do this podcast and we we talk just about every night or every other night, at least a few nights a week. Yeah, um, we got a pretty good relationship going. But it, it's just, you know, actually that's why that's why I haven't really been on. Um, it's because Blue Bloods is going off of Netflix, and I think currently they're on their tenth season on air, and there's eight seasons on Netflix. And we're trying to get through all of them because it's going off of the air on November something. And so we're trying to catch up on the season or seasons to where we can watch the new season before it goes off of Netflix. Otherwise, your boy's going to have to spend $50 for two seasons on Amazon for us to continue watching it. Oh, speaking of Amazon shows, um, I think that uh, after I finish JoJo, I'm going to watch Jack Ryan. I heard it's really good. It is good. I saw... I think I bought Prime for a month, and I just watched that show. Yeah, so... Because we have that Prime. So I might, um... After I finish JoJo, I think instead of moving on to another... Which is going to be Samurai Shampoo, um, I'm going to watch Jack Ryan. Right. And that that's something else. is like Disney Plus, I think. Crap. Did I tell you I don't oh, have to pay for it anymore? For Disney Plus? No, my homie is just going to give me his. Oh, that's cool. That comes yeah, out. I, was like, I was like, no, I was like, hey, dog, no, I'll split it half. I'll split it down the middle with you. And he goes, not to take it. I was like, okay. Same guy that did the Hulu with me. Ah. Say, so, um. Disney Plus coming out. 
Do you want to watch the Mandalorian together? I don't know. Fair enough. We'll have to... Have to see. But yeah, um... Let's just say, it's weird because, like, we both go to college, and then we... Well, you do more stuff than I do, but... I go to college, and then... Basically, I have to wait to get picked up to come back home. So I don't really have... Christ, what is happening right now? You good, bro? What happened? Nothing, you're good. Um, I, I was just sitting here waiting, listening to you talk. Oh. I wasn't doing anything. The, uh... What was I going to say? But now, it's going to be interesting because Thursdays, most of Fridays and mm -hmm. Sundays, I'm streaming or recording. And it, it's just, it's weird because when you're... When you're bored or when you're in a slump, like we've talked about before on the podcast, and there's I'm like... I'm not with Fallout 4. I'm happy about that. Well, yeah, but I'm saying in general, when you get out of the slump, you get used to doing other stuff. So for yeah. me and my mom, that was sitting down and watching TV. But now that, you know, I'm like, okay, Outer Worlds, gotta get it streamed. Um, after, as soon as I'm done with Outer Worlds, boom, Death Stranding will be done. After actually in the middle of Death Stranding, boom, Star Wars. But then we'll get a calm down after December. But then March hits. No, April hits and boom, Cyberpunk. And then May, Last of Us. And then after that, we don't know. Probably until October when Ghost of Tsushima comes out. But uh, that'll, I think that about wraps it up. We got through everything in just a little under an hour, or over an hour. Um, Word. Even though it was mainly in my sweet voice that everybody says is absolutely sweet. You don't believe me? Go check out comments on some of my videos. Silky smooth. Silky smooth. Somebody said I should run for president with my voice like that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. We will see you guys in the next uh, episode. Episode 8. That'll be in about 2 or 3 weeks depending on the scheduling. So uh, we'll, we'll talk to you guys next time.